what Web3 pioneers are doing with NFTs and how they are leading. Hi guys, I'm Zach. I'm an artist. I'm the co-founder with my partner Kane over here of NFT Club. I also have a project called Cacti Crew and at the side I also build intellectual property. And I'm here to talk to you about how 98 to 99% of all NFTs are scams. But the ones that are not scams are the ones that I want to speak about and how they're innovating. So let's start off by talking about what these NFTs are. For those of you who don't know what an NFT is, I think it's very important to explain just in case. An NFT can be a mix of any of these things, the outcome. It can be an image, it can be a video, it can be a mix with audio, it can be a mix of any of these things. So what's so special about NFTs? You can prove on a ledger that you actually own something. So there's proof of, of um, ownership. And there's a ledger to see who previously owned it and where it's been. And because of the use of smart contracts, you can actually earn royalties also, which is very, very useful. So how are pioneers using NFTs? The smart ones are actually using it to build community. And what I mean by this is they create this filter where they can channel people who are normal followers to their super fans. And what we mean by super fans, it means these people who adore what they do, who keep on buying everything that they produce. And so what they do is, once they have and they know who their owners are, they continuously add value in the form of many other things. And I will explain, in the form of merchandise, tangibles, airdrops, gifts, it can be any of these things, discounts, percentage of ownership, so they keep on adding all this value. And what happens is, it creates this ecosystem. People who are on the outside of this community, it generates all this hype and they start speaking about it. So what happens is, the people who are on the outside and have FOMO, they want to get inside. And what happens? They buy secondary sales. And that keep on, keeps on driving the ecosystem. Because they usually projects have around 5 to 10% royalties. So here are just a few examples of NFT pioneers that I have noticed. I've been in the space for around two years. It's very late for crypto, but it's very, I would say, early for NFTs. So these are a few of the notable ones that I've come across. We're going to start with CryptoPunks. Where is their value? Their value is basically they were one of the first projects. And besides that, they can be seen as a historical NFT. So this will continuously be looked up and valued. It's basically a generative project. And what that means is that they, there's a number of assets that come together and through code, they actually create all these different variations. And some are rarer than others. Crypto kitties. Why are crypto kitties so innovative? Back then they were innovative because they actually allowed two NFTs to merge, to mate, and to create a new, a new um, cat, a new kitty. And they have different rarities. But what was so cool about this is if you go on their website, you can see who their mom is, who their dad is, and you can see that mom and dad used to sleep along a lot. They used to sleep around, so they had many children. Another very, very interesting project is CyberKongs, and this was super innovative because they created their very own token. They were the very first. They created a thing called Banana. And if you bought one of their Genesis, there were only a 1,000 at the time, um, you would generate 10 bananas a day for a whole 10 years. And what you do with, this, with these banana tokens is you can use it in their ecosystem. So, for example, to mate to, to, uh, to Cyber Kongs, you'd, you'd need 600 bananas. So that means you have to wait 60 days. And you get a baby. And that baby, obviously, would be, will have a value of its own. They also took it a step further by collaborating with Sandbox. And they created their own avatar. And uh, they also created a banana shop. And what's amazing about this is you can buy products and you can buy things to customize your avatar. Another one that probably everyone over here has heard about, Word Ape Yacht Club. Besides them being an amazing profile picture and you see every celebrity rocking them, it's much more than that. They started out as a 10K project and it's an exclusive membership into their community. There's also the mutant tapes, which basically if you got in early and you managed to get one, that give the serum where you can evolve your ape into a mutant ape. And they also created, because board apes get bored and lonely, they also created the Kennel Club, which is not a membership tier, but it's just an add-on to have. If you own the board ape and you own the mutant, they gave these ape coins. And these ape coins, they gave, if I'm not mistaken, 10,000 to ape holders, and they gave 3,000 to mutant holders. So if you were early and you had an ape, that means you would have had around 13,000 of these tokens. Current value of these tokens, is about two or three dollars. 
But when they came out, if I'm not mistaken, they were close to 10. So that's a very, very big airdrop for free. They also created their own metaverse, and it is one of the best metaverses, and I have the pleasure of saying I got to know about it because of my friend Luca over here, who were out in Gozo and were exploring it, and it was crazy. Like, it's, it's a, on another level. And they're also really well known for creating amazing merchandise. And besides that, since they have all these celebrities as part of their community, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, they throw really crazy cool parties. So just to give you an idea, if you bought an ape at 0 0.08 for $200, today you would have made, <laughs> I did that on purpose, 123 ETH. Now that's a lot of money. So another one, this is one of my favorite and I really admire this person, so I'm a bit biased with this. V friends. Gary knew that he wasn't an amazing artist, so what did he do? He created these NFTs that gave a lot and a lot of utility. I really believe that he is the first person to really create utility NFTs. And I'm gonna speak mainly about Gift Goat. And what Gift Goat is, is basically he gives you around 18 gifts for a period of time, and they're completely limited editions. He's, keep in mind, he's a very, very respectable person. He's collaborated with great individuals and brands, and the, the stuff that he can give is crazy amazing. Like, Creature World, um, he collaborated with, with Vans over there, Blue Label, and more gifts will keep on coming. This is just for owning the NFT. And you can even meet him, speak to him, just for being part of this community. He also created Vcon, which was crazy. This, this is, I think this was the first event that they had created around an NFT, where he brought together all his network of these amazing people, and they spoke and they gave amazing insight. And, this day was a very happy day for me because I got to meet my hero. Besides that, he's turned his childish drawings into an intellectual property and he plans on building it to be, dare I say it, bigger than Disney, which is amazing. He's already collaborated with Macy's to sell his toys. It's so crazy how you can see how an NFT can grow someone. Beeple, so this is art-based NFTs. And what this is, is basically there's no, not util there's no utility for it. There's mostly just art-based. So Beeple, I would say, became more valued for his work because he underestimated himself. So he gave away these NFTs, but he wanted to create a tangible case. And if I'm not mistaken, he was one of the first ones to create these casings. And these were sold for a dollar, and they went up to 100,000, just because he underestimated himself and the market was at its right period. He's also the creator and the person who sold the world record for an NFT, which was 69 million, which is basically 5,000 every day. And if you zoom in, you get to see what happened. And what's crazy about Beeple is each day has some kind of context of what's happening during the day. And some irrelevant as well. Another crazy project, and I really think this is going to be the future of projects, is uh, Artifacts. Now, Artifacts has collaborated with one of the greatest living popular artists, Takashi Murakami, a very, very big hero of mine. And they created Clonex. And you have all these different avatars with different DNAs. And what's so cool about this is they got acquired by Nike. So a digital fashion, fashion NFT company got acquired by one of the biggest companies that create amazing clothes, amazing sneakers, everything. So what did they do? They started adding value by giving you full access to your avatar. So you have a fully rigged avatar, which is like crazy. And they also gave you a pod, a 3D pod. So over here in your pod, you can hang your NFTs, you can put your 3D assets. So they're already adding a lot of value. They also created tangibles by giving NFTs as well. And they created these forged events, which is another amazing idea of how they're going into it. Keep in mind, Nike is crazy. So what you're seeing over here, these are real people, and they're using um, augmented reality filters, but these are the actual clothes that they gave. So you'd buy them as an NFT and you'd forge them into real life. And they're also, what is amazing, they're bringing on bigger brands to partner up and get them into the Web3 space. Just an example, if you bought a Clonex at 3 ETH, currently, total with all the airdrops and everything, you would have earned around 14.7 ETH. Not that high as the apes, but it's, it's a very, very great project. Another project I'd like to speak about is Nouns. I don't know if anyone has heard about it, but this is quite innovative. What they're doing is they're doing a daily auction every single day. This is an artwork created, gener generated. If I'm not mistaken, it's on-chain. 
It's generated and uh, they sell every single day an auction and they go around 30 to 40 ETH every single day. Now that money, the person who wins this, this uh, NFT, is part of a DAO. And what that means is all that money that goes into this DAO, once you own one of these nouns, you can become a person who can govern where the money goes. And there's zero royalty fees. So this is completely for this community of the nouns. Another amazing project is Proof, Proof Collective. This is art-based and it's community-based more than anything. So Proof is run by Kevin Rose. He has an amazing podcast. He has an amazing collective and a very close Discord. And this Discord is in with top, top artists and top collectors. And he's also airdropped and created this project called Grails, which collaborates with great artists, Moonbirds, and Oddities. So what's, what's so amazing about Moonbirds is the fact that when you hold a Moonbird, you can, you can nest it, it's called. So what that means is it creates something, I don't understand code, but it creates something that doesn't allow you to sell it. So you nest it for a period, it adds more scarcity because people aren't selling it, but they get gifted for the long they nest it. There's a bronze nest, silver nest, um, and, there's, and there's a gold nest. This is Grails. They're bringing very, very res res respectable artists into the space, and they're collaborating by creating very, very limited editions. And this is, I wouldn't say I'm innovative, but I would say I'm doing something a bit different. This is my project, it's called Cacti Crew. I am basically, more, more than anything, focused on art, daily art. I turned Monta into a cartoon, using this character called Beppe. And I show up every single day and do a drawing every single day, and I'm doing it for a whole year. We're on day 255 right now. And I feel like, for me at least, I, I show up, I explore different materials, different mediums, I'm trying 3D. And I feel like this is perfect for me to grow as an artist. And in the meantime, I am adding utility. As I'm learning about these things, I'm giving airdrops, so I love hip hop. So I'm recreating my character in very reputable artists' hip hop albums that I admire and I used to listen to when I was growing up. Um, I'm also working on a toy, which I never thought I would do in my life. And since, you know, since it's a community, you might as well do something that I've always wanted to do. I've also managed to collaborate with people who I really look up to, Charles and Ron, and we created a collection of clothes together. So, I'm here to tell you that, yes, there are lots of people out there who are scam with NFTs, but there are some people who are not, and that 1% or 2% are pretty much some people who are focusing on these. For example, there's art, there's collection, there's profile pictures, DAOs, utility, and historical NFTs. NFTs can do anything. The world is yours. It's up to you what you wish to do. Thank you for your time, guys. Does anyone have any questions? Again, what's up? My favorite, besides my own, uh, my favorite NFT project, I think right now is Artifacts, CloneX. Any questions, guys? Or just feel free. Yes? On? Bixi, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of that. Sure, sure. We'll speak after. Any more questions? Anything else? Yes? About to collab. Cool. Sure. Awesome. Anything else? Any questions? Going once, going twice? Okay, we're good. We're good. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time.